Hey everybody, I figured I would uh, show you what I'm working on now. Uh, about three or four weeks ago, we, uh, my wife and I picked up this trailer from my, uh, from my stepson um, as a birthday gift because uh, it's, it's something you want to use for, uh, for camping and you know, taking stuff uh, when he goes camping and loading up the trailer so he doesn't have to necessarily load up uh, everything in his car. So we, we uh, found this trailer for, I believe we found it for like 75 bucks. So uh, if you look at it real quick, um, you can tell it needs some lights. Um, it needs some work because uh, the plywood is not attached to the deck. Um, needs some cosmetic work. Uh, all the fenders have some bubbling paint and everything else. And uh, that trailer stand has seen better days we got a couple of uh spare tires and everything else and you know the, the trailer is not a true four by eight it's kind of like it's a four by something and the previous person that had this didn't uh cut the plywood to go along with the frame so right now the, the plywood is kind of just hanging over, over the corner it's really not that stable it really doesn't make it that good for loading uh, purposes and believe it or not, the only thing that's really holding the uh, the plywood on the uh, the frame is uh, a single bolt and the nuts that are on the fenders. <laughs> that's the only thing that's holding the, uh, the plywood down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, um, essentially go through the rehab of this trailer, show you what I'm going to do and and everything else. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to rewire it. Put on some lights, uh, rewire the whole thing, um, paint the fenders, uh, repack the, the the hubs and the bearings, make sure they're all, those things are good to go, and trim off the plywood so it's nice and neat. And we may be putting a, a stake body on it, so whatever he loads up on here, you won't have to worry about it falling off. So. So, uh, follow along and uh, we'll go through the rehab and go through the air and I'll show you all the tips and tricks and everything I did uh, when I did my snowmobile trailer last year. So it's pretty much the same process, it's just a little bit different, so follow along, thanks. Okay, so like I said before, uh, this plywood is only held on to this uh, trailer frame by uh, that single pan head screw um, so the thing was already pretty uh, rusted uh, sawed on there so I just used the sawzall and just zipped it right off and so what I did uh, while the plywood's still on there I used um, this guy as, as, a, as essentially as, an, as, a, uh, as a scratching guide so what I did is I just uh, I scratched the, uh, the entire it's uh, perimeter of the uh, frame so when I take the plywood off it's gonna give me a nice uh, saw guide and it's gonna match up perfectly when it goes back on there so so we'll zip the plywood off and I'll show you you know we'll take a look at the uh, the general uh, condition of the frame all right so we uh, we just took the plywood off and on first inspection, the frame is actually looking pretty good. Other than it being dirty, um, I don't see any obviously huge uh, concerns of rust or anything like that. All the welds look to be in pretty good shape. Uh, I don't see any, uh, really any major areas of concern. Um, all the, uh, you know, important intersections everything looks good all the cross members look good um you know so what i'm going to start doing is i'm going to start removing some of the old hardware that's on here that from the old lights whatever was on here i'm not quite sure there's you know stuff kind of all over the place and there's all the old wiring for the lights that are no longer on it and uh there's some additional um hardware that is going to be removed. I'm just going to use the Sawzall just like I did before and zip it off and 
start wire brushing the heck out of this thing and get it nice and clean and go from there. So on to the next part. All right, so everything's off the trailer. Uh, all the miscellaneous old hardware is off. I just took it out and washed it down. I got the majority of the mud and dirt and everything else off of it just to start with a somewhat clean slate before I wire brush it. And essentially I'm just gonna go pretty much all the way around the frame in the pockets on the top and hit as much as I can with wire brushes and wire wheels to um, essentially just get it ready for paint and some uh, rust inhibitor. So what I'm gonna use is um, this cheapo Harbor Freight half inch drill with a uh, wire wheel on it. So um, this is what I, typically what I use on this. I'm sorry, it's actually a 3 8 drill. Um, this is what I typically use uh, for this type of work. So if this thing fails, I really don't care because I didn't spend that much money to begin with it. So I'm gonna go hit it with a wire wheel and I'll show you the, uh, the results when I'm done. Hey, now it's green. <laughs> All right, so what I did is I, I uh, went around and, and wire brushed the whole thing um, with the drill and you know took some wire brushes and then basically went around the whole thing getting in all the channels and everything else I took it out closed it off wiped, wiped it down and what you see now is a uh, rust inhibitor slash converter so what it does is you essentially you brush it on and what it does it stops any active rust and then uh, it, it uh, cures and then in 24 hours you can paint it so it goes on green but it dries black. So if you look, in some spots have already dried, it's black. All right, so this is what I use as a rust inhibitor. You can buy it at any auto parts store. It's essentially a Rust-Oleum rust remover, and it uh, essentially you, you take it, pour it in a container, uh, take a cheap paintbrush, and just spread it on and go at it. So um, it's not caustic. You, you, I don't wear gloves when I apply it. Um, it doesn't burn or anything like that. It's pretty safe, so it works pretty well. Um, the uh, so it's uh, been applied and it's going to take 24 hours to cure, and then we'll uh, pick up on it tomorrow morning. We'll start hitting it with some spot primer and then uh, start painting it. Okay, so it's been a full 24 hours since uh, I put the uh, rust inhibitor on it, and as you can see, um, <clears throat> it has pretty much stopped all the rust and it, it turned everything black. So at this point, it's essentially, it's ready to be uh, spot primed and uh, for paint. Uh, but before I do that, and uh, <clears throat> um, you know, before I go down that process, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start uh, the uh, steps to, all, to do all the lights on it. And what I did is I went to Harbor Freight and I picked up a light kit. And this is the one I picked up. It's an LED light kit with uh, two marker lights, two uh, running lights with brake and uh, turn in indicators. So, you know, it has a full wiring harness, a license plate mount, and everything that you need to do to. Uh, on the trailer so it's pretty much a universal fit figure out how the uh, the wiring is going to work out as far as the lengths and everything else <clears throat> so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start doing the uh, the mock-up and uh and uh start doing the uh the routing for electrical and go from there so yesterday i spent the majority of the day doing the wiring on the trailer and uh, everything works came out pretty good so I figured I'd show you uh, what I ended up doing as far as the routing and the uh, how I tied in all the lights and, and everything else just to give an explanation of uh, what you need to do if you buy this particular kit and uh, as well as uh, a couple of other things I did so uh, with any standard um, trailer lighting kit there is a uh, there is the left and right hand side stop and turn and then there's the running lights so in the uh, in the harness um, 
there's essentially, there's four wires. There's a white wire, which is always the ground. There's a brown wire, which is the running light. Then there's green and yellow. And the green and yellow are the left and right brake lights. So the brown wire is the driver side brake light and the green side is the right side brake light. So if we look down at the light, you're gonna see a green wire, a brown wire, and a white wire. So the white wire is the ground, the brown is the running light, and the green is for the uh, brake light. So on the, uh, on the driver side, it's the same thing. You have the brown wire again, the yellow wire, and the white wire. All right. So we go up to the front with the, where the marker lights are installed on these little bump outs. What you have is you have a brown wire and a white wire. All right. So since this kit is a universal kit on these uh, marker lights, essentially you, you have the option. You can either use them or you can just omit them and not put them in at all. But if you do put them in, what you have to do is, again, the uh, their marker light uses the brown running light circuit along with white ground. So what you would have to do is essentially take the brown wire and cut it, right? And then what you do is you're going to patch this in and then shrink wrap it and everything else. And that's what essentially what makes the circuit. <coughs> All right, so another thing with this particular kit, the white wire is the uh, the grounding wire. And in this kit, there isn't, it doesn't use a common ground uh, for our, any of the lights. So essentially what you have to do is you have to uh, ground each individual light. Um, so if you look, each light has its own white wire coming out of it. And what I did is I used sheet metal screws and I grounded it to the chassis. And then what I did is I used silicone to um, weather protect it on each uh, grounding point as well as backfill the, uh, the, uh, where it went through the chassis with silicone just to keep it weather tight. And I did it on all four corners right there. All right. So if we go back to the, the back, you have the same thing, right? And you have the same thing in, in the, uh, the other corner where I use silicone just to ground the, uh, the ground, the, the weather protect the grounding points. So it just makes it a little bit easier to uh, not to worry about any um, issues down the road as far as corrosion, you know, that's just gonna make it protect a little bit better. Another thing I did is I soldered all my connections and then I use shrink wrap. Again, I don't use like buck connectors whenever I can. Uh, I never have a uh, little luck with them. So I just solder these and I, then I shrink wrap the ends. And then if you look, everything is in wire loom, which, uh, which is zip tied all along the, uh, the frame rails and it goes all the way up to the front. So if you follow the, the wire loom all the way up to the front, everything is weather tight. Uh, and then it goes up to the, uh, the frame rail, up through the tongue, and um, to the main point. So what I have to do is I still have to get a end to put this on. What I'm gonna use is kind of what I use on my snowmobile trailer, which is this guy right here. This is just a crimp on end, and what it does is uh, it checks every circuit. So if you have any uh, issues with the uh, the circuit, uh, one of the one of the LEDs will be dark. So I have to go out and, and get one of these for uh, to put on the end. But just to show you that the lights do work, what I'm gonna do is uh, I have a 12 volt battery, and I'm gonna hook everything up and. Go from there, I'm gonna shut the lights off in my garage. All right, so what we'll do is just connect this guy right here. All right, so you can see 
their marker lights are on, as well as the, uh, the running light and the brake lights are both illuminated because right now I just have everything tied together on that one lead so everything's going to be on. Um, one thing about this kit, again, when you get from Harbor Freight, it also has a plate light on the driver's side. So if you look, you can see where my foot is illuminated. What it'll do is, once you have your license plate holder attached and your plate's attached, the, uh, the plate will be illuminated. So, one nice thing about that kit. I didn't even know, I didn't even notice it had it until I turned it on, so it's a nice feature. Um, so essentially, that's how your basic trailer harness, any lighting kit for a trailer works. Um, again, the white wire is always ground. Brown is the, the running circuit and then yellow and green. Um, it's very basic, it's very simple. So the next part is now I got the wiring done. Uh, I'm gonna be going on to paint the trailer and making everything nice and neat and then putting the plywood back on and uh, going from there. Okay, I just finished painting it. What I used was a uh, flat black paint. I went around the whole thing and just did inside the channels and across the fenders and everything else. Uh, I think that came out pretty good. So I'll just give a quick walk around just to show you guys. Paint is still wet on the fenders. I literally just finished painting it about two months ago, so it's still drying. So I think it's gonna look pretty good when it's all said and done. So the next part will be putting the plywood back on and screwing it down. Okay, so uh, I went ahead and uh, cut the plywood to shape, uh, following those uh, the guidelines I I had put on it before I took it off. And uh, then I went ahead and pre-drilled all my holes for all the uh, for all the screws, and uh, went ahead and fastened it um, every uh, ten or twelve inches or so. So the screws I use are these guys right here. It's essentially it's an inch and a half. Actually, I think it's an inch and a quarter. Self-tapping uh, sheet metal screw. So, uh, what it is, I pre-drilled all my holes ahead of time and uh, then just had used uh, you know, a destroyer impact driver to drive them in. So, worked out pretty well and uh, I don't think this thing's going anywhere. So, uh, I think it came out pretty good. Um, the only thing left remaining is I got to uh, replace the, uh, the bearings on both sides of the... Of the uh, trailer. Um, I thought I was going to originally be able to just uh, take off and take them off and repack them, but they're so far gone. I had already taken them apart once while I was waiting to do something else, and the bearings are just too shot. So I'm just go ahead and uh, pick up a couple bearings for each side and uh, go ahead and uh, replace them. Um, I'll probably make that a separate video uh, once I get the bearings. As far as what's left on this thing, uh, I got to talk to my stepson as far as what he wants to do. Because at this point, this is what I told him I would do for him as far as uh, getting it to this point. As far as, uh, you know, getting the, uh, the electrical all set, the wiring, and um, the trailer painted and everything else. So at this point, it's ready to go, minus the, uh, the bearing replacement. So I don't know if he wants to put a, still wants to put a stake body on it to... Uh, finish it off I gotta to talk to him but if he does I'll certainly document that and show you in the process of what I'm gonna do so uh, so essentially that's it as far as this trailer rehab again it wasn't that hard it already does take time and uh, some basic hand tools and everything else and you can do it it's, it's not that big of a deal um, if, if there's any questions or comments or uh, thoughts on what I did or you know just anything in general I'll go ahead and leave it in the comments box, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, thanks for watching, and have a great day. Thanks. Bye.